Hi, my name is Mike Ball. I'm a project manager and branding enthusiast at One Social Media, and I was recently fortunate enough to sit down with best-selling author Marty Newmeyer, who wrote The Brand Gap, Zag, and The Designful Company. I got to pick his brain on a variety of topics, and here's one of his answers now. Globalization has taken down a lot of the barriers and how people respond by um, putting up their own barriers and creating their own smaller, more fo focused groups or tribes. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times those form around brands. Um, how do you, you think social media has contributed to that? And then what responsibilities fall on the brand to interact with these tribes? Or um, what are their responsibilities with these organizations or these smaller groups or cultures that have formed around them? Um, sometimes they form around brands, but that could be kind of an illusion. It's more like they're formed around other things that are more real to people, but the brands have a place in that, right? So there's probably a lot of people, we're, going, we're talking about Nike, there's probably a lot of people that are amateur athletes and who watch TV sports and do a lot of sports and everything, and they might have their own little groups that they hang out with and... Part of that group are the, the products that they buy, right, that right. define that group. And so um, to be one of those products that, that is important to that group is can be very powerful. Um, and I suppose there are brands that people form around just for the brands. You know, Apple comes to mind. Right. And probably cool cars and stuff like that. There are people that um, just love their Mini, you know. I'm yeah. one of them. <laughs> so, but I don't think I'd necessarily hang out with other mini people, you know. I suppose we might compare notes. If I saw someone in a mini in a parking lot who had a different kind of mini, I'd say, well, how do you like your whatever it is, your mini clubman, and we'd yeah. have a very brief conversation. But I wouldn't call it a very deep tribe, you know. So it's kind of just a role to fit in where needed almost instead of trying to overwhelm or um, almost trying to influence them at all anyway, just to find their, their role. It depends on what you know, who you are, and what 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 the tribe is built on. You know, but um, it, I think the, the the thing to remember is that um, brands are built around groups of people who are similar, um, except for like very big, broad brands like Tide detergent or something. You know. Right. Um, but the reason it works that way is because you can focus on that group. You can you can give the your your product or your company the characteristics that will appeal to that group and that are built by that group really, um, and you don't have problems of conflict between groups. So if one group thinks you're one thing and another group thinks you're another, there's a conflict, mm -hmm. and you come off as inauthentic. And so the rule of thumb, you know, if you want to be really strict, is one brand per tribe. And if you need to, if you want to address a different tribe, you've got to invent a new brand for that tribe with a new brand name. 